the veil between heaven and earth is not as thick as we assume. I think that's one of the key uh, central messages, not just of the book of Revelation, uh, but of the entire Bible, that the veil between heaven and earth is just not as thick as we assume. I mean, oftentimes, you know, I pray or, or I've come into or come through a, a rough season, and it's easy for me to think that God is further away than what he truly is. It's easy for me to think that, that God is distant, that actually when my prayers go, they have to go through this impermeable canopy in order to actually get to the Lord, that the veil between me and heaven is quite thick. And I don't know if anything really matters that I do down here, because I'm not sure that it affects much up there. There are two passages in the book of Revelation, though, that seem to challenge me with a different perspective. The first one is Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, John is on the island of Patmos when all of a sudden he hears a voice behind him that sounds like a trumpet. And then he turns to look at the voice in verse 12 and he sees one like a son of man. And it says, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands and among the lampstands was one like a son of man. Now, here's why that is important. Because of what the symbol of the lampstand stands for. When you go down to verse 20, Jesus tells us what the lampstands stand for. He says, the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand. And the seven gold lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Now, here's the thing that is frightening for those that are in rebellion, but incredibly comforting to those that are in despair. In Revelation 1, it reminds us that the veil between heaven and earth is not as thick as we assume. In fact, Jesus is walking in the church. He is walking amongst the lampstands. He is present with us. Whether we acknowledge it whether we embrace it, whether we utilize it, whether we cling to it, whether or not we admit it, Jesus is present among us. And you know, I can't help but wonder if we truly believed that, that Jesus was present among our churches. I wonder if our board meetings in the churches would go a little different. I wonder if our worship services would be filled with less critique of the music, critiques of the sermon, and more focused on the fact that the risen Lord is now standing with you. I wonder if it would actually change how we functioned if we believe heaven and earth were not as far as they seemed. See, because I truly believe that heaven has invaded earth through Christ, through the giving of the Spirit, through God's revelation, through his movement toward us. He is present. Revelation chapter 8 gives us another dimension of this separation between heaven and earth or lack thereof. Revelation chapter 8 is the seventh seal. It says, when the lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer listen, with the prayers of all God's people. See, there, there's a couple of interesting things that happen right here at the beginning of this text. Verse 1, we have this very strange, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. To, which makes me go, why? Why was heaven ceasing to cry out praise? Why was heaven silent? And what's fascinating is the elements that are, the, the element uh, that is hammered on, that is repeated multiple times in the text that follows, is this one singular phrase, the prayers of all God's people. Verse 3, he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people. Verse 4, the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of all God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. You see, I think that in Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, silence happens in heaven as a way to remind us of God's response to our movements here on earth. That what we do down here on earth affects heaven. In fact, God is so intent on ministering to us as children, on interacting with us, 
his prized possession, that when we speak, heaven stands still to listen. To listen to us cry out to the Lord. Over and over and over, Revelation hammers this thought into our head that the distance between heaven and earth is not as cavernous as it, as it first seems, that the veil between heaven and earth is not all that thick. In fact, it's quite porous. I don't know about you, but that brings me deep comfort. Deep comfort that knowing that, that I am able to invade the space of heaven with but the uttering of a word, with but the posture of prayer, in the same way that God himself invades this earth, not just 2,000 years ago on a cross or you know, in a manger in Bethlehem, but he invades this earth through the outpouring of his spirit in the very real presence of Christ among us, indeed, as Christians, in us. This next week, I want you to open your eyes to the grace that's around you. I want you to open your eyes to the fact that heaven has invaded earth. Because when Christ died on the cross, one of the things that was very intriguing to me is that the veil and the Holy of Holies separating the presence of God and the Ark of the Covenant from the outer courts was torn. I love you guys. Talk to you next week.